This is the RDU On Stage podcast. I'm Lauren Van Hamert, your host, and on this episode, I'm chatting with Eric Woodall. As we've talked about on this podcast, the trickle-down effects of this pandemic on our arts community is just mind-boggling. And while I think on this podcast we've done a pretty good job at spotlighting the smaller theater companies, which are certainly struggling right now, it's easy to dismiss the hardship on the larger companies. But as North Carolina Theater's producing artistic director Eric Woodall tells me, the struggle for a theater company like NC Theater is not only very real, but also magnified. The amount of layers in this arts story, I mean, the amount of layers in the the health crisis story is huge. But even when you get down to specifics and look at how it's going to impact our theater community locally, nationally, globally, it's enormous. This feels very unprecedented to me. So in your career, working in New York, working here, has there been any other events on this scale that has impacted the theater community in in such a profound way? Certainly not that I am familiar with um, in my time, um, in my lifetime. I know that in the last several years we went through, I think Broadway was shut down. It's been a couple times for weather related reasons and then for, for strike. And there was a time about two years ago when it looked like there was another possible strike. And that certainly um, started sending up lots of of red flags and we were all very worried. And um, and one of my first calls when this all happened, when Broadway shut down last week, was to my former boss, Tara Rubin, just because not just her, not just her company, Everybody, general managers, agents, of of course, casting directors, um, everybody that works on the production side, like that is the livelihood. So to hear that Broadway was stopping for a month and now the tours are, you know, that the, the, the weekly, the weeklies that come in from those shows, that's what keeps the doors open, you know, in these offices. So my heart went out to them just for those reasons. And then, yes, as you say, the, 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 the trickle down, I mean, how it's affecting all theaters, large, small, commercial, nonprofit, everyone in the arts. But um, I think we're still in shock, quite honestly. I think we're still reeling because unlike anything that's come before us, there's no end date. We, we, we can't say, oh, let's just get through this and get to, you know, uh, next week. Let's just let the storm pass um, and pick up the debris. Let's let the snow melt. You know, this is nothing like that. And um, um, I think we're all just taking it a day at a time to figure out how to make our way through it. I know just just in, I mean, every day it changes. But just in the last week, it's it's continued to morph and get more and more dire, quite honestly. Well, and the interesting thing to me is I, I spoke to several artists in our community here who were in New York during 9-11. And there was a defiance in the theater community, like we are not going to let the terrorists win and we're going to open and... A few people told me their shows opened, you know, two days after 9-11 just to give people that arts outlet. But in a health crisis, defiance really isn't an option. It's a very different situation. It, 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 no, it really is. And comparing it to 9-11, I mean, certainly there are comparisons and similarities, but 
I, I, I actually had um, the incredible experience of being a part of a benefit concert that had been planned for, um, I think it was September 13th um, of 2001. I think that's the day that the concert was. It was an Actors Fund benefit and it was Dream Girls and um, Audra McDonald and Lilius White and uh, Heather Headley, Tamara Tooney. And so Seth Rudetsky had put this together and he's a longtime friend. And I had done a production of Dream Girls <laughs> years ago with, with this whole crew. And so I was lucky enough to be, that I was asked to be a part of it. I was actually directing a play here in Raleigh um, at the time, but I drove up for rehearsals and the concert went on. And I remember the rehearsal right after, I guess um, it was on, it was on the 12th, I guess. And, and everybody was, it was, it was hard to keep going, but you're right. There was this defiance. It was like, we're not going to let them win. And there was this, this, this fear that something else could happen, but we went on with that concert and the love and the energy, the community came together. And, you know, the fact that that particular concert was an Actors Fund benefit, it was, we are this band of brothers and sisters that are not going to give in and that are going to keep going. Um, this is different. This is different. I, I do think, you know, artists are strong and resilient. And, you know, one of my favorite um, slogans is champions adjust. So this will not take us down, but boy, it's going to cause us to... Um, to reevaluate, and um, I think we're all in a sense of survival mode to figure out how to keep spirits up and um, to figure out what's next, um, figure out how we can keep going. Um, there are going to be huge, huge questions asked. You know, today is really the first day that I have felt like this social distancing. I have been working from home, but, but today's the first day that's felt weirdly like a sick day or a snow day because up until today you know we tried for several days to keep our rehearsals going we we had to cancel our production of memphis um last thursday but we made the decision to keep rehearsing we were going to try to get through today um because we would have a full run through so we kept rehearsing we kept rehearsing and then we saw as the days continued that there was no way we could keep that going that it wasn't the right thing to do Luckily, we got through the second act, so our show, our show got staged, got on its feet it, in five days of rehearsal, which is miraculous, but um, we pressed through so that we had a sense of what that second act was like, but we knew we had to send everyone home. But there was something that happened at the end of um, the rehearsal on Sunday night, which I had let the cast know Sunday morning that this would be our last day, that we couldn't keep going, and we would you know, change their flights again and get them all back to New York, those who were from out of town. But we got through the second act and it was, um, there was this moment that I'll never forget. It was, you know, through tears and it's an emotional show anyway. And it's so beautiful and the music is so gorgeous. And um, it was the very end and people were crying and applauding and standing and then it stopped. And when it was that, that natural, you know, that natural tapering off of the applause and we all just looked at each other and everybody was standing and we didn't know what to do. There was nothing to be said. And there were about 30 minutes left of what would have been the regular rehearsal. And it, we just got quiet. And, um, you know, the director said, this is not how I thought this was going to end. But we said to be continued, and um, there were lots of elbow bumps, <laughs> you know, and, and some hugging still um, at that point. But um, it's, it's uncharted territory. Um, it really is. And we, we have been working diligently at North Carolina Theater to figure out what is indeed next, um, because we have this production of Memphis that we feel passionately about trying to figure out how we can continue and, and mount we have a production of Edges that we were supposed to begin uh, rehearsals on in just a matter of weeks. Obviously, we can't stick to that timeline, and so we're figuring out what is possible later on. 
So that has been my life. That's why today is the first day that's felt like the snow day because I had been on the phone and on, on computer, you know, nonstop and trying to figure out what is possible, what the rights holders would allow, what equity will allow and, and working on production teams and, and schedules and sets and costumes and, and actors. And, um, what I have found is this um, overwhelming sense of um, grace and a huge heart and um, people are wanting to work together. I mean, my goodness, just the idea that we're trying to see if something could be possible later on in, in, the, in the summer, those ideas are being met with open arms and you know exclamation marks <laughs> in emails. Just yes, anything that can can be done to create work right now. You know, I spoke with a designer this morning who said everything he 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 was he's furloughed in his um, survival work and he. Um, which is a designing job, but is is his main source of income. And then all of his design jobs that he lined up have been canceled. So the idea of having anything he was jumping at, you know, and so, and that's just one example. I think everyone is um, sort of spinning and reeling and um, we'll just be figuring out how to move forward. So one of the things that got thrown around immediately, it seems like when this was all happening is on social media and, and just the buzz that I was hearing was everybody was saying, okay, well, you can videotape these productions and, and put them up that way and figure out an alternative way of delivering shows. You've been in this industry a long time. So could you explain to our listeners the licensing and copyright restrictions when it comes to, you can't just film Memphis and put it up on a live stream. That's, that's right. That's right. And, you know, oh, what, what happened when we first, I guess, you know, oh my gosh, it feels like time has just stopped in many ways, but I guess it was just a week ago when we were trying to hurriedly make decisions. And this is before Broadway closed. You know, once Broadway closed, we knew we were done, you know, as far as Memphis is concerned. And we, we knew there was no way we could continue. But that day and the day before, Elizabeth Dorn, our, our president, CEO, and, and I were on the phone nonstop and, and meeting and talking about possibilities. And one of those possibilities was how could we get the production, if we couldn't get an audience into our theater, how could we get the production out to our ticket holders and maybe even beyond that? How could, would there be the possibility of streaming something? So we started thinking, how would something like that be possible? And you're exactly right. It is no easy feat, but we got in touch with the rights holders um, um, and we, we got in touch with Actors' Equity and wrote very compelling letters quickly to see if something like this, if we could get special permission, because you're right, you, you can't just record something. It's against all of the all of the rules and our contracts. It specifically states in all of our contracts that nothing like that is permissible. I will say that the good news the good news is everyone is trying to make things possible. So the the word that we got back from the union and from the rights holder. Um, uh, was if you can make something like this work, we are willing to work with you to see how something like this could happen. The bad news is by the time that happened, the writing was on the wall. There was no way that we were going to be able to get into our theater to have um, a production, a physical production that we could tape. Um, and... So you know what people have been doing all around the country is taping little bits of a little bits of rehearsal. Um, that's that's permissible, tiny bits. Yeah, it, it's it's a huge thing, but I do think it's a new normal. You know, we're finding new ways. Um, certainly, the rights holders and and it's a case, on a case by case basis. But we were met with people that were very agreeable with trying to come to a new solution, 
it certainly wasn't um, the way it might have been three weeks ago, where somebody said, are you crazy? Of course you can't tape. You can't put anything up. We were not alone. There were many theaters that were trying to do the very same thing, continue with rehearsal so that they could get something at least taped. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know of anyone who was able to continue to that point, but there may have been some people. And there are people who were um, trying to brainstorm other things like that. So I, I want to ask what is the financial impact on a company like North Carolina Theater in, in shutting down a show like Memphis, looking forward to postponing a show like Edges? I know you guys had to postpone the auditions for Sound of Music. What What is the compounding financial impact that this crisis can have on our on a local company like yours? I don't want to throw a figure out, um, but it's gigantic. I'm so grateful to you for d doing this piece and for um, getting in touch with so many of the theaters in the area, whether they be large or small. I think, you know, certainly we are all nervous and protective and of our, of our smaller companies. And those are the companies that come to mind first because we think, how are they going to get through something like this? And I think it's easy to think that large companies like Playmakers, North Carolina Theater, like I think sometimes we're viewed like this um, big house on the hill, you know, that's untouchable or that we're, we're dripping in money. It ain't true. And we are just like our brothers and sisters with feeling so nervous at what is next because um our budgets are large but our our overhead is so large and the theater that we're trying to fill you know and we don't own our space so there are so many things that that go into it um you know it, it, it's it's just it's monumental especially if we're not able to continue with the programming if we're able to continue with the programming and we're able to give our patrons what they have signed up to receive, then I think it's um, we're dealing with one set of numbers. And then if we're not able to do that, we're, we're dealing with a whole different set of circumstances. Well, and it's my understanding, too, in your case or in any professional theater's case, that when you bring equity actors here, like you did for Memphis, from out of town, there are those expenses, those contractual obligations that still have to be met, whether the show goes on or not. This is true. I mean, this is what, this is one of the reasons that, you know, from a financial point of view, that we're trying to see if we can continue with Memphis because what a, what a lot of people probably don't understand is by the time a show is in rehearsal, it's done. I mean, as far as we, we're concerned, we work on things a year, eight months in advance. The money has all been spent, like the sets, the costumes, the actors, the pay, the, the all of the designers, it's all been done. So by the time you get into two weeks before performance, you're adding water and you're stirring. Um, but we have already put so much money, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, it's out there. And so we, we need, we need to do the show and have people come see it so that it begins to basically pay back what we've already put out. So if we are able to continue with Memphis, this is just from a financial business point of view. Um, not to mention how we believe in the, the story and the artistry so much. But from a business and a financial point of view, if we can continue with what we've already invested so much in, um, it will help us. It won't cure anything, but it will help a little bit. Because, yeah, we've already, it's already, it's already done. So it could be this, this huge, a complete loss. Not just on Memphis. I mean, because even though we haven't gotten into production on our, our other shows, the, the investment, the amount of money that we had to pay, you know, ahead of time is is gigantic. 
And because you are so well connected with the New York community, I want to ask you this question too. Financially, what is the impact, not even on the long running shows that have been there forever on Broadway, but what's the financial impact for the shows that have just opened? Because we just started a new season. Oh, I, I, I think, you know, I think it's going to be, it's, it's, it's monumental. I mean, you know, nobody wants to predict anything terrible at this point, but I mean, the, the truth of the matter is who knows if the shows that are in rehearsal or that were in previews right now will ever make it. I mean, that, that's, that's the, the truth of the matter. And, and certainly shows that were struggling, there were shows that were scheduled to close within this period of time that that Broadway is dark and you know the inheritance for example they they knew they were closing but they had no idea that was their last night and so they just went out with this whimper you know and I mean lots lots of that happened to lots of people and shows shuttered around the country I mean the Aladdin tour was out and knew they would be closing this spring but didn't know that they'd be closing up shop suddenly you know, and who knows, like six, six, they, you know, Broadway shut down on the evening that six was to open. And so they canceled the opening. Six has a lot of backing behind it and a lot of attention. And so I hope that that show will be fine once it does open. But every, every, I mean, nobody knows. Nobody knows. I mean, I think it's just, we're all waiting for the dust to settle to see how we begin to pick up the pieces. And that's just going to depend on how long theater is is halted. And what's sad to me about this is it it was shaping up, and I'm going to be optimistic and say it is shaping up, to be a very good season on Broadway. I know Six is probably one of the more high-profile shows that are opening, but, you know, there's smaller shows like Sing Street and Girl from the North Country, which kind of did have an opening but then shut down. There, there's a lot of exciting work. There really is, and it's it's so varied. And my office, since I have been with them, but Tara Rubin casting cast Sing Street, and I saw it down at New York Theater Workshop, and it's amazing. And like you say, it's um, it will be such a shame if all of the shows that were planned to open in this season don't get to. Um, whether they get to open in this season or next season, we just hope they get to open at all. But um, yes, this season was shaping up to have such a feeling of versatility. I also want to talk about the emotional impact. What is the mood at North Carolina Theater right now? You employ a lot of people locally. And then of course, you're you're working on this show and you have all these fabulous actors coming together in community to put on a production. So um, emotionally, how's the people of North Carolina theater doing? You know, I think I think we're doing okay. I can speak for the majority of us um, in that well, I think I can say I can speak for all of us in that there is this unwavering, spirit of hope and and belief that we will get through this. People are staying very positive. I know that we're continuing with, you know, in our group emails or our Zoom meetings and everything that when we have come together, um, there's a lot of humor that's being shared. There's a lot of positivity we've begun to share, you know, what have you learned today? What are you doing different today than, than you did before this happened? We're talking about things like that. And I think, I, I certainly know that um, on the show side of things, and when we were still together as, as a company with our incredible local artist and, um, you know, the 12 out of town performers, what I loved about those early days is I kept coming back to the office and saying, out at the studios where we're rehearsing, we're living in a bubble. We're continuing to act like nothing's happening. Of course, 
we know that it is and we're scrubbing our hands and we're being aware, but we're continuing on. We're not letting this um, dampen our spirits or uh, we're not allowing it to halt us in any way. So that was, that was freeing in a way to have something to do to continue. Obviously, we could not continue that um, very long. We, we had to stop that. But everyone was, the human spirit is resilient. And I believe that adversity doesn't build character. It reveals it. So what can we as a community, because like you said so eloquently, I think everybody's very mindful that some of our smaller theater companies are really going to suffer and, and maybe they think uh, North Carolina theater has, has big purse strings and won't suffer as much. But what can the community do now to rally around our theaters and our local artists? And then what does the community need to do long-term once we get out of this pandemic to support our local theater community? Well, I, I don't know that I have any advice that that hasn't been shared or, or um, stated by, by many people already, but um, this is going to be a time of need for everyone, not just people in the arts. So we fully respect that. But if anyone is able to make donations at this time, we, we all need it because um, yes, it, as, as I did mention earlier, it's easier to think that North Carolina has these big purse strings, but I will say it's all relative. It's all relative to the size of productions that we do. Because the contract that we have with Actors' Equity, you know, states that we have to hire 16 equity contracts, well, really 18 if you count the stage managers, per show. And for any of your, 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 your theater folks that are listening to this, they understand what that means. And, and, well, and they may not fully understand what it means for us because the terms of those contracts are, are different based on how large your theater space is. And our theater space sit, seats 2,300 people. And so we're just talking that it's on a really large scale, not to get off on uh, so far, you know, you know, detailed in that way. But the point is, it's all relative. Our, our productions are large. And so what we put into those, the, our productions is, is a lot. We all need contributions and we're all going to need assistance and help. And then once we're past this, you know, I just hope that people go to the theater and go to um, arts events and, and the symphony and the museums like they have never gone before, you know, just take advantage. If this is teaching us anything, it's teaching us to live for today and to do as many things as we can do. And that's to, in, to hopefully help enrich in all of our lives. But from a financial point of view, it's going to keep us afloat. You know, I just hope when we bounce back from this that everybody is going out to eat and going out to drink and going out to see a show. North Carolina Theater just announced its new schedule for the remainder of this season and the beginning of next. Memphis will now run July 28th through August 2nd. The Sound of Music will now run October 13th through the 18th, and Edges will now run November 6th through 15th. NC Theater will kick off next season in February 2021 with Sister Act, followed by On Your Feet, Ring of Fire, Peter Pan, 9 to 5, and Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill. I'll put the link to NC Theater's website in the episode notes. Now for some announcements. First, we have RDU on stage merchandise. Originally, we reserved our RDU on stage swag for our subscribers and patrons. But in light of how COVID-19 is profoundly impacting our arts community, we are now selling our t-shirts and mugs online with all proceeds benefiting the NC Artist Relief Fund. You can click on the merch link on our website to see the products that are available. 
In other news, RD on stage is a finalist in Indie Week's Best of the Triangle 2020 contest. We're nominated for Best Local Blog or Website, Best Twitter Feed, and Best Podcast. Log on to the Indie Week website and the episode notes to cast your vote for all your favorite businesses and organizations through May 4th. And once again, thank you for your continued support. It means more to me than you will ever know. If you like what you've heard today, please consider subscribing to this podcast. Follow us on social media at RDU on Stage or visit us online at www.rduonstage.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay engaged. <laughs>